And so I think the sense of meaning is actually an instinct that orients people in time and space. It's not an epiphenomena. It's the most fundamental form of perception. And that's the only optimistic thought that I've ever been able to derive from psychology, is that that actually could be true. It could be that the sense of meaning is an orienting reflex. And that would be wonderful if it was true, because it would make it real, you know, and it's one of the, one of the devastating elements of nihilism is something like, well, who the hell cares what you're doing? What difference is it going to make in a million years? It's like your sense of meaning is just an illusion. You know, you're, you're a limited creature in a limited place and nothing you do really matters. It's like, that's a powerful argument, especially if you're an objective materialist and a reductionist. It's a killer argument, but it looks to me like it's wrong. It's actually wrong. Because meaning looks to me like it's an actual phenomenon. It does say that you're, you're positioned properly between chaos and order, or something like that. It's real. So if it's real, you want to know that because it gives you something to stand on. You know, maybe it's as real as pain, but it's not pain. It's something positive, and you need something positive that you can rely on. There were two periods in my life where I was badly depressed and suicidal because I had rationalized myself into believing that meaning was just something humans make up and project onto the world. And therefore, if I could rationally deconstruct it, it didn't exist. And as I'm going to attempt to prove in this video, that is technically wrong, no matter how much I or other people try to explain otherwise. It's one thing to understand Jordan Peterson's idea in the abstract that meaning is a physiological instinct like hunger or thirst, but it's another thing to understand the more relatively complex neuropsychological evidence that Jordan Peterson uses to back up his claims. And that's what I'm going to go into detail in this video and explain some of it drawing from his lectures and a few other resources. I don't expect that this video will tell you what the meaning of your life is, but it certainly will provide you an argument against yourself when you're trying to rationalize your way into an existential depression, which I have done on more than one occasion. Let's start with an idea that most people who listen to Jordan Peterson are probably already familiar with, which is that you cannot experience positive emotion unless you inhabit a value structure or a hierarchy of values. And I'll explain what that term means because I think it gets muddled, but we'll get into that in a moment. Positive emotions, dopaminergic. It's a consequence of the manifestation of the exploratory system that has its roots in the hypothalamus, a very ancient part of the brain. It's the same part of the brain that cocaine and heroin, all the drugs that people like to abuse, the, the drugs that are exciting, not the drugs that are calming, it activates that system. It's the system that's activated when something exciting happens to you or when something novel happens to you. But more importantly, it's the system that's activated when you're pursuing a goal and you see that you're moving towards the goal. So what does that mean? No goal, no positive emotion. So you say, well, if you have nothing to believe in, if you have no value structure left, because a value structure says, this is better than this, no value structure, no positive emotion. Let's unpack this idea of a value structure because this is a very specific technical psychological concept. And if you can understand and visualize it, then you can better evaluate whether or not the specific behaviors are engaging in moment to moment, the literal motor actions, whether or not those are aligned with what you want to get out of life when you conceptualize it in the abstract. Now you could say you're in this class and you're listening to some information and Maybe there's two reasons for that. You might find the information interesting per se, but let's forget about that for a minute. You need to listen to the information so that you can do well on the assignments, so that you can do well in the class. You need to do well in your classes so that you can finish up your degree. You need to finish up your degree so that you can find your place in the world. You need to do that so that you're financially stable and maybe you can start a family and have a life and that's all part of being a good person, something like that. And so, that's a hierarchy of goals, and you might say that being a good person would be the thing, however vaguely thought through, that's at the top of that hierarchy. And then, when you're doing things that serve the, that ultimate purpose, then you're going to find those more meaningful, and that meaning is actually produced as a consequence of the engagement of this exploratory circuit that's nested right down in your hypothalamus. It's really, really old. It's as old as thirst, and it's as old as hunger. It's really an old system. A hierarchy of values is not a rank ordering of abstract values like fairness versus justice versus mercy. It's a technical schema for mapping out goal-directed behavior. And I want to show you what my schema looked like when I was depressed and what I did to change it. So here is what I wanted out of life in the abstract. 
to find my place in the world, and from there maybe start a family and ultimately live a meaningful life. And even though I was on track to have a career that was fulfilling and sustainable and would have helped fulfill the finding my place in the world goal, I knew I needed something to supplement it with, but I didn't know exactly what that was. And here's what I was actually doing on a day-to-day -day basis, playing a shit ton of League of Legends. So let me map out the value structure of a League player. I'd farm minions to gain golden XP, and with that I would buy items to make me stronger and scarier in the face of my enemies. And then I would epically pwn noobs with highly sophisticated microplay and intense psychological warfare. And in principle I would win the game. But the thing is, when I had free time, this is all I did. Over and over and over again. But since I had no hope of becoming a professional gamer, these nested sequences of actions weren't fitting into the more valued goals in my hierarchy of values. But I still felt meaning from winning these games, even after they became less and less fun. And the reason is, winning games did fulfill a valued goal of mine, which I hadn't fully articulated myself, yet I was acting on nonetheless. And that valued goal was staving off boredom and existential dread which is a pretty good goal to have, and one I definitely still have. But living a meaningful life with a family and all that is probably far better at achieving that goal than playing video games constantly. It is interesting to note that when I started playing more seriously with my friends on a team... Yo, guys, you want to play some League of Legends? Oh. Paul, I'm actually editing a video tonight, so I can't. <laughs> Fuck you, ass facts. <laughs> Each individual game of League took on more meaning. I wasn't just queuing up in the toxic hellhole that is solo queue to kill time. I was practicing to get better so we could win more games as a team. So even though the game itself didn't change, the fact that I was playing the game for a new, higher order goal imbued each game with more meaning. But because my team fucking sucks, and to this day we still have no hope of making it to the LCS. Alright, are we ready if I engage again? This yeah. time for realsies. Yep. Nice one. Holy nice shit. one. No, that's really good. I figured I should stop playing so many video games and start focusing on something else. So here is how I restructured my higher resolution values so that they were more conducive to my highest goals. Instead of playing video games and farming for golden XP, now I edit and make videos to communicate good ideas so I can grow my online following. And from there, well, I technically still don't know what comes after that. And to the degree that I still doubt myself when I make these videos, it's because it's sometimes hard to see the path forward. But I do know that whether it's building a useful community, meeting new people, or even just forcing myself to put complex ideas in an easily explainable way so that I can actually understand them myself, all of these outcomes are far more likely to lead to behaviors that will better allow myself to find my place in the world and align with the higher order goals that I have for myself, thus imbuing the process of making and editing videos with much more meaning than just playing video games. Now you could say, wow, Paul, you're just using Jordan Peterson's diagrams to make a point that you need to have the right goals in life. That's pretty uh, obvious and not that interesting. But you have to understand these schemas don't just exist in the abstract. They are representations of the functionality of the most ancient parts of your neurophysiology, specifically the hypothalamus, which Peterson has mentioned twice already. And understanding this part of your brain at even just a moderate level of complexity is what innervates these schemas with their meaning. So we're going to talk about a structure called the hypothalamus, which psychologists don't, human psychologists don't talk that much about because human psychologists are what do you call them? They're corticocentric. You know, we need another thing to, what would you say, to resist prejudice against. And modern psychologists are prejudiced against non-cortical systems because they like to think that their prefrontal cortexes, which sort of separate them even from chimpanzees, are the important parts of the brain, and they're not. As we'll see, what is critical in making sense of the cortex with respect to all this stuff, this limbic emotion behavior stuff, and everything coming for the rest of the course, is the rumors of the cortex being this rational, independent, analytical part of the brain that goes about its business while all this hormonal, emotional muck is going on south of it is completely wrong. All sorts of aspects of cortical function are being influenced by the limbic system. This is going to be an enormously complicated circuit, but at the end of the day, there is one way to think about it, which is unifying, which clarifies everything, which is the thing that every single nucleus and subnucleus and sub-subnucleus in the limbic system, the thing that everything in the limbic system wants to do is tell the hypothalamus what to do. 
The entire limbic system is structured around trying to influence hypothalamic function. Your entire brain is at the mercy of this ancient hypothalamic circuitry, including your prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain involved in abstraction and reasoning, including your pitiful attempts to rationalize the stupid idea that life has no meaning. But most importantly, your hypothalamus is what imbues the specific motor action you're engaging in with meaning via the dopaminergic reward system, which is the exact same way that you would feel a sense of positive emotion and meaning after preparing and eating a big meal after you've been hungry all day. Because the instinct of meaningful engagement, which is activated when you are engaging in behaviors that are moving you towards a valued goal, which always involve the learning of some new form of information, whether it's experiential, abstract, or sensory motor, that instinct is as real and fundamental as the instinct of hunger. And just as your body can tell you when you are satiating your hunger by providing your body with nutritious food, you can tell when you are in the place of maximal meaning with the same part of your brain. Meaning is actually an instinct. Like you think, okay, so we already decided that incremental self-improvement is the proper route. Okay, so how do you know when you're incrementally self-improving properly? And the answer is it's deeply engaging. It's deeply meaningful. And the reason for that is you're actually adapted neurologically to identify the pathway of maximal incremental improvement. That was a discovery conceptually by a guy named Vygotsky, who was a Russian neuropsychologist who coined the term zone of proximal development. You hear now and then people say they're in the zone. That's mm. the zone of proximal development. And that's that place that you occupy when you're improving at the rate that's optimal to you. And your sense of intrinsic meaning signifies that. That's how your bloody brain is wired. Lateral hypothalamus has something to do with hunger. And that's the area that people wasted years on thinking they were studying aggression when they were instead studying predatory behavior. Lateral hypothalamus has to do with hunger. Really interesting level evidence that the lateral hypothalamus has something to do with hungers in the broader sense. Hungers for types of information. Hungers for other rewards other than food. It's an area having to do with hunger. So attempting to rationalize your way in and out of meaning is like trying to rationalize your way in and out of hunger. You can't do it. You have to physically put yourself in places that activate the sense of meaning that hundreds of millions of years of evolution and selection pressures have conspired to wire deep within you. And those physiological structures only activate when the behaviors you are engaging in align inside your own hierarchy of values, such that what you are doing is serving multiple goals nested within the same ultimate goal that you are wired to pursue, such as living a meaningful life. But you do orient yourself, and I think what you do is, you, it, it's engagement. It's like, does this seem meaningful and deep and engaging? Yes. Then, it's an indication that it's serving multiple masters simultaneously. And so I think the sense of meaning is actually an instinct that orients people in time and space. It's not an epiphenomena. It's the most fundamental form of perception. And that's the only optimistic thought that I've ever been able to derive from psychology. So while it's up to each individual to figure out what goals fit into their hierarchy of values or figure out what values already exist and simply need to be articulated, hopefully now you're in a better position to evaluate from moment to moment whether or not the actions you're engaging in are able to activate that deep ancient circuitry that produce the sense of meaning that your mind and body so desperately need. And so with that, good luck. And Godspeed. <laughs>